you so much for this opportunity. And uh, actually, we're pushing to the App Store today, so um, you'll it'll probably be available um, sometime next week. So just depends how how Apple uh, takes care of it. And of course, it's going to Google Play as well, so it'll probably be available there at about the same time. Um, but I'll just uh, share my screen here and tell you a little bit about myself and our project and our experience with outsourcing uh, this time around. So you can visit our website at scoby.social and um, I highly recommend everybody does that because I think you'll really like our offering. So I live out here in West Virginia um, in the woods on the river. That's right down my driveway. Uh, there's my dog, Arrow, and my wife, Monica. We moved out here about 25 years ago so we could raise our children, Daisy, Milo, and Zoe, who are now 22, 24, and 26 or something like that. <laughs> They're old, they've, they've moved out. Um, and we have a grandson, Oliver. Um, I started as an entrepreneur back when I was an undergraduate at Yale University. I started an independent record label out of my dorm room. And I caught the internet bug uh, pretty early. I delivered a paper at the first international conference of the World Wide Web at CERN Particle Physics Lab, which is considered the Woodstock of the web. So I've been doing development for about as long as there's been a, a web. Uh, I've worked a lot out of my house, but I've also worked out of uh, a small office in town. We only have about a thousand people in our town. I've built the companies um, without doing much outsourcing. Um, I have, I've usually hired people, some which relocated here some who stayed where they lived, but mostly it's been full-time employees. I built uh, a web development company, a FinTech company, a video game technology company, and a uh, most recently a renewable energy company. Um, and again, I've hired a lot of people. Um, I've also had several patents. I've been entrepreneur of the year. I've raised tens of millions of dollars in venture capital and sold many, many millions of dollars of product. So I pretty much know what I'm doing when it comes to technology and starting companies. Um, but this is my biggest idea and I really wanted to get it right. Um, here's just kind of the backstory. So I was serving as entrepreneur in residence for a global educational nonprofit. Now, this nonprofit had all of their courses in hotels and conference centers, in retreat centers. They were all in person on location. And when the pandemic hit in March, all of their courses from New Zealand to South Africa to the United Kingdom to the US were within a two week period all canceled and they were facing massive layoffs. Um, fortunately, this is, I was entrepreneur in residence. I know how to get things going. So I very quickly set up an online academy um, and I found something that was really important, which was uh, the educational foundation had something like 4,000 really active participants. Um, many of them joined the online programs and really felt it was even richer than what they were experiencing when they took the courses in person. They met people from other cultures. Um, they benefited from uh, the convenience of doing it online. So it really worked for the current audience. The challenge was, as entrepreneur in residence, it was also my job to really expand uh, 
their audience. And I tried all the current methods in terms of search and social, um, adver- you know, advertising, organic, um, funnels, all kinds of traffic builders, you know, all the things I had always used in the past to build my other companies. Um, but for some reason, it just wasn't growing as fast as we wanted it to. And the more research I did, the more I found that the real challenge is that as people get better and better at online marketing, the algorithms keep improving, not for you, but for big tech. So Facebook makes more and more money. Google makes more and more money. Amazon makes more and more money but you're still on this treadmill that's moving faster and faster against you. So all you can really do is raise your um, costs, raise your prices for your offerings or reduce your, uh, the quality, you know, basically sell more. Um, And neither of these were very appealing. So I was, I was kind of stumped. Um. But then more and more things started changing in culture. I found that all of a sudden game night was moving online. Book clubs were moving online. Like my daughter who plays D&D, she had Dungeons and Dragons online. Um, All kinds of therapy and medicine and health care practices. Yoga was all moving online. Of course, weddings, I started getting invited to Zoom weddings. Um, My brother-in-law's birthday party was on Zoom. Um, And of course, meetings, you know, all kinds of meetings and hearings and, you know, events and conferences um, like this, uh, all moved to Zoom. Um, And even things like, you know, sales pitches were all moving online. Like I was seeing, you know, when I was interested in something, it almost always went to a scheduled Zoom call. And then I started thinking about what was being canceled. Of course, business travel, mostly shut down, uh, co-working spaces, um, a lot of offices started getting scarce going out for business drinks, business lunch, coffee, those kinds of things started going going away. Um, so I realized that what was actually missing in all of this was a way to a way to discover, host and join these meaningful conversations, these meetings. Like so just I'll use this as an example, the Israel Ukraine Outsourcing Alliance. Um, you're having this session, but you had to use Facebook. You had to use all of these different channels, Eventbrite, to get people here. Well, what I I started thinking, well, what if I was just having an interesting conversation with Slava or our, you know, his CTO? And we were doing it publicly. And people said, wow, those guys know really what, what they're doing. Um, let's go ahead and use them as, um, as a vendor. And I realized that this was a completely new thing in the market that social media centered around public conversations does not exist. What exists is live streaming. What exists is, um, chat like Twitter is all that, but there's nothing that is centered around a zoom like experience. Um, so we, design the system um, and, you know, it has a feed. Uh, You can discover their, you know, hashtags. You can let people into your conversation. You can boot them out of your conversation. There are are guest lists if, you know, raise your hand to join the conversation. But there was also a whole economy that we built in and we really, we, we look at a way to have this for free, but also not to, run a treadmill against the providers, you know, making it ever more expensive to reach people. This is all free, 
what you really just pay for is the services on the back end if you want, if you have something to offer. Um, so uh, it really, you know, we innovated not just on the form factor of social media, but also on our ability to help businesses, help our clients. So how do we do this? Remember, I'm a super experienced entrepreneur. I mean, you know, like uh, earlier, someone said they had 30 years experience and someone else said, well, I'm only 30 years old. So I actually technically have 34 years experience as an entrepreneur. Um, and uh, so I'm an old guy here. So why did I do this differently? I mean, one thing that I really learned was um, I caught the lean agile bug, right? So I wanted to use an outsourcing firm, but I wanted to use the processes that I know that work. I wanted to have um, continuous integration and deployment. I wanted to have a very small backlog. I wanted all the things that, I wanted a culture that was really supportive. I wanted weekly retrospectives. There was a lot I wanted. I found that there were, you know, many, 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 many technically qualified outsourcing firms. But there was only one that said to us, um, we're kind of a mashup of an outsourcing firm and a co-working space. So we're going to hire people to your specification that will work with your team as your team. Plus, they'll be supported by product managers and DevOps and uh, project management and user experience and testing and a CTO and you know all of the things that I didn't want to hire. And also I knew I didn't have time to hire um, because I was also, I was still working as entrepreneur in residence and trying to help this nonprofit. So um, I hired very few people. This is my team. Um, Matthew Melman was at uh, Apple and I've been and at EA, Electronic, uh, Electronic Arts. We worked together for, you know, a decade or so. Rachel Lawyer is helping our clients produce their materials. Bill Thatcher is putting together partnerships. We, we hired one technical guy for this, um, machine learning, just because we needed a, a super pro. I mean, it, behind all of this is um, the algorithms that match people into the, the right conversations and a finance guy. Um, um, but there's probably you know, we have a full-time front end, full-time back end developer, all part of software me. And then, you know, there's a team that shows up in the meetings of between five and 10 people, depending on what's going on. So we've been totally fully supported. And it was just in terms of the speed, the cost, you know, after, quite a few years of entrepreneuring, this was the first time that we decided to, to go the outsourcing route and um, absolutely zero regrets. So uh, that's our story. And I really do hope that um, you go to scoby.social and find a way to use this for your own business and ramping it up and finding an audience and making a lot more money. 